name's Stephen Chester, um, Steve for short, everybody calls me Steve. I'm, I'm the director of Premier Aquatics Limited, which is uh, my baby. We're a year old, so um, this is my company, my business, and we're a tropical fish shop um, based in Runcorn, Cheshire. And we seem to have hit upon a winning formula, I think. We, we seem to be really popular at the moment, which is fantastic, absolutely exactly what I wanted from the business uh, to help the local community and it seems further afield but to help local fish keepers and offer a really good reliable service we seem to be doing that quite well at the moment so very very happy <laughs> too many years um, I'm 43 now I remember keeping a goldfish in a tank at the age of about five um, and I've been around fish and fascinated with fish ever since. Um, my first fish tanks came at the age of 13 or 14, I can't remember exactly now, it was a long time ago. Uh, an auntie of mine had two three foot tanks, one on top of the other, and like a wrought iron stand and I mithered my mum to put them in my room at the bedroom, in my bedroom at home. I remember selling some Star Wars toys to to, uh, to finance that, and I actually bought them myself off my auntie. Um, I often wonder now where I'd be if I one kept the original Star Wars toys because they're <laughs> worth a lot of money now. Um, but I think that set me off on this amazing journey that I've been on ever since, uh, from the age of about fourteen. God, I've been a hobby that hobbyist then. That was my first two tanks. Kept uh, neon tetras and the guppies and a general community tank. Oscars below that. So I had two large Oscars. It wouldn't be recommended now. The tank was too small, really, but I managed. Um, and I learned a lot over the years just by self teaching, reading magazines. I avidly bought Practical Fish Keeping magazine, books, whatever I could do to, to, to learn, uh, I did. And then going into further along, uh, I developed a, an interest in epistogrammers, uh, especially. Uh, that was tended to then, I tried a lot of different things, discus, planted tanks, uh, community tanks, some of the larger cichlids. And I settled out with the dwarf cichlids. They really fascinated me, uh, epistogrammers especially. And I got to a stage where I was just keeping the standard things that you'd find in a local fish shop. Cacatoides, Agazizai, Borelli, um, few Masteri, of course. And once I'd got those ones and, and managed to find them, they're not so easy to find anyway, but I toured all the local shops, uh, I'd asked favours for people to order them in for me. And, and once I'd reached that point, there wasn't a lot more available in the commercial trade, but I knew that there were a lot more fish out there. A pistogram is a massive genus of fish. Uh, way over 200 different species and I was just intrigued I wanted to collect more I became a collecting thing as well as the breeding of them and that led me into the organized hobby so I first made contact with the Northwest Cichlid group that was local to me they were based in Rainford um, and yeah I went down to their auction so one of their auctions met the guys that were involved with running that and quickly became associated with them, went to the club meetings. Uh, Andrew Wood, who was auctioneering at the time, was an epistogrammer guy, who then introduced me to another epistogrammer guy, Mark Breeze. And it just snowballed from there. I went to visit them at their homes and see the fish rooms, became friends, decided to build a fish room of my own. And that was in 2006, I think, my first fish room at home developed. Started small with about 12 tanks and rapidly grew over the years to, I think last year I closed it down when I started Premier Aquatics and the home fish room was about 90 tanks dedicated to mainly soft water fish. Um, but over the years I've bred maybe six, 700 species. Wow. So I've bred a lot. Um, that's the hobby side of things. Um, 2014, I think, I was reading Practical Fish Keeping magazine and saw an advert that said somebody somewhere is going to get their dream job uh, fresh blue blue planet aquarium in cheshire oaks which is about 10 miles from here so somebody somewhere is going to land their dream job um blue planet aquarium is looking for a freshwater aquarist 
and something just clicked i don't know what it was i'd never even thought and contemplated working with fish before and i applied no experience other than my hobby and poured my heart, heart out into my cv gave all my background gave what i was doing in the hobby the fish breeding the book collecting by that stage i had a huge library of books and magazines that i was, I was using to, to self-teach and I aced the interview and got the job um, over some more experienced public aquarists, people who had been in that industry before, which I was really pleased about. I had a year there uh, as lead, uh, um, freshwater aquarist. I then went on to display supervisor. I wasn't in that role too long and then a job opportunity came up at Chester Zoo. And again, I applied for assist assistant team manager in the Chester Zoo Aquarium. That was a maternity cover job, so it was only temporary for 12 months. And I got that, I got that position, moved over to Chester Zoo, and then landed the job of lead keeper. Uh, almost straight away by a fluke that somebody had left um, after 30 years of being in the aquarium. I, but that opened up a full-time position for me and I moved into the lead keeper role after I'd finished the assistant team manager role. And then from there, I had five wonderful years at Chester Zoo and then decided to start Premier Aquatics last year. Um, the rest they say is history, but that's a brief potted history of, of where we are and, and how I've ended up here at Premier Aquatics. I've I don't know why, um, at the age of 18, 19, I said to myself, I used to tell myself all the time, by the time I'm 40, I'll own my own business. And, I, and it was always ever, it was only ever going to be fish. So I'd say by the age of about 18, I don't know why I sort of put an age limit on it. I don't know why I said I'd do it by the time I get to 40. I think subconsciously that was me being scared of stepping out starting throwing myself into it into the unknown and um, it's very secure to have a paid job uh, to go to work knowing that you're going to get a salary and um, i had a young family of course so we had children relatively young i've got three wonderful children now that are growing up rapidly so i think now that just the time feels right to get started and to throw myself into it but uh, why i didn't do it earlier i don't know um, Maybe it wouldn't have been as much as a success as it is being now. Maybe my maturity is uh, a big bonus in that. But yeah, it took me took me a long time from the initial thought that one day I will own my own business to actually owning it and uh, not starting it. And now owning what has turned into a limited company with an amazing customer base. And uh, hopefully, well, judging by the customer's reactions, uh, an amazing fish shop as well. So... I'm really delighted. Okay, um, so I started, I went through a bit of a bad stage at Chester Zoo. Um, I suffered with depression and I'm not a depressed person. Uh, I don't get like that, as I never have. So in 40, 40 years of uh, life, I've never really suffered with depression and um, just a few things at the zoo and um, the way they're set up with the team certain individuals within the team and um, the monotonous sort of rotor of the job and everything else and i really went through a, a, a tough stage and um, coming out of that i managed to get myself through that and um, started running I really worked hard to get the doctors wanted to put me on antidepressants and I didn't really believe that I needed that. I just needed a change, I think. I think I realised quite quickly that I needed something to change in life and the direction that I was going. wasn't feeling satisfied uh, with work and how everything was going with work. I just sort of drifted through it. Even though Chester Zoo is an amazing uh, career job, I thought there was more to life than uh, working for somebody else and working for a big organisation like that. So in 2019, September, um, I registered what was initially um, Aquazoo was the original name that I chose for the business and chose Aquazoo, registered it as a limited company. And I think that's September 2019. And I did that to protect the name um, quite naively. I didn't do my research properly. 
we quickly found out that there is a company out there trading as Aquazoo and I didn't want to clash. So that was the initial start in um, September 2019. And from there, the excitement was building. So I was starting to look for properties. Um, I already had my own savings. So I put all my life savings into setting up and starting. Didn't Luckily didn't borrow any money. So completely self-financed. Um, and yeah, we started out. So December, I moved into the Heath Business Park. We were looking originally, at, I was a sole trader. I was working on my own. I was looking at uh, industrial units, all kinds of different places to locate the business. Uh, the industrial units were great, but they were very, very cold. Uh, we were getting into winter, well, we were in winter, it was December, but I quickly became apparent that my budget would have been swallowed up just by insulating the building rather than um, do you, do you get what I mean? I needed to insulate the building to keep the tanks warm and to stop the electricity being bill being too high. And it quickly realised that that with the budget that I had, it wasn't really vi a viable sort of business plan. Um, so I moved, well, as I was looking, I started to look for more and more obscure places, maybe a barn or um, double garage maybe, or something that I could use to put a, biz a small business in. We intended to be a, a very small online business with a rack of tanks and to be shipping fish out. That was the, the plan that I had. And I stumbled across an advert for Heath Business Park and science, the science center and lab space. And the more I thought about it, I'd worked in labs, uh, both at Blue Planet and Chester Zoo. We'd been around that sort of environment. And um, so I knew my way around at a science lab. I knew how they were laid out nice non-slip flooring. This building had really thick concrete walls and um, re retained the heating. And yeah, so I came for a, a meeting with the sales manager here and ended up looking at this room that we're in now, uh, Lab 507A, uh, 750 square foot. It was the smallest room that they had um, and it was seemed ginormous to me. It was an empty room, but it seemed absolutely huge. And there's a picture of me just after we'd received the keys and had signed the paperwork to take on the room. There's a picture of me stood in there in an empty room. And the second my friend Graham took the photograph, I can remember thinking, how the hell am I gonna fill this room up? And 12 months later, we filled it and now we're looking for somewhere bigger. So it's been an amazing journey, it really has.